number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buff covering all things theater. And we are coming to you from the LTV studio in Wainscott, where I have a special guest, my friend, theater producer, talk show host, showbiz phenom, uh -huh. Jamie DeRoy. <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much for coming and welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure to have you. you. Oh, I'm so excited. You have so much going on. Uh, as a theater producer, as an all-around person that's doing so much all the time, it's like you've got a little finger as a producer and all these... A lot of fingers and a lot of pies. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, a lot of them nominated for Tony Awards. Which is very exciting. Which is really exciting. I know. Tina, Tina, the Tina Turner musical has got 12 nominations, which we are thrilled about. And most particularly for Adrienne Warren, who plays Tina Turner. She is just phenomenal. I mean, she really, she's a fireball of talent. Shall we show them right? Shall we go sure. right to those? We, so, so we have, a, we have a, uh, a B roll of Tina, the musical, which is nominated for 12 Tony Awards. And Jamie is a producer. Uh, let's have it. So, including Best Musical. No, oh, just including Best <laughs> Musical. Yes, yes. Forgive me. <laughs> It is just so wonderful, and that the way I mean that concert at the end is like, oh my God! But it's a great story. And I saw the show before, you know, before before we went into the pandemic, and she is phenomenal. She really. Uh, is. I mean, to me, she's a, sh a sure sure bet for the Tony Award. Well, let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see Adrian Warren win it. It would be great. And I hear she's just signed. She's going to definitely come back. She's coming back, and Daniel J. Watts is coming back as Ike Turner, and uh, you know most of the cast. And it's it's very it's just very exciting, a very you know dynamic and exciting show to be at. Oh, it's fabulous! You know? It's absolutely fabulous. And, and, and now um, you have the date that's that it's opening. Well, Do you remember? It, we go back for uh, you know October eighth. It starts. First, first performance back. The, the, when they go back, like after being closed like that, is it still in previews or is it well, open? Well, no, it's not called previews because it's, it's open already all? open. Mm -hmm. But, you know, may, they might have, who knows, they might have an invited dress like they would have if they were just really opening because mm -hmm. they haven't been on stage for, by the time they get on, uh, more than a year and a half. It's almost a year and a half I know. Now. That's, I mean, like... I mean, just like just here coming back into the studio, it was like you know a little like not the same. Exactly. Of, of not being. But it'll be so moving to be back in a theater. It's it's going to be thrilling. Uh, when I see the clips of the stuff, and I remember what it just makes my mouth water to want to be sitting in the seat and witnessing I live theater. I missed it so much. Well, you and I belong to the same church. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you? Uh, so, but you know, now besides Aunt, Aunt Ain't Too Proud uh, is another musical that you've been a part of. Well, that's and another it's coming team. back. And it's, yeah, it's coming back and will reopen on October 16th. And it is, it's just so magical. You know, it's the life and times of the temptation. So all the music is music that everyone knows. And it's like, you know, well, it depends, I guess, on what your age is, but certainly was part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's just, but it's, 
it's so it's moving and it's it's a great story, but it's it's exciting and it's just you know, I can't wait to see it again. It's been a long time. I I, I can't wait to get back to see all of these. Well, shows. Can, I, I I would love to see Ain't Too Proud again. I, so I I want to go back and see it. It is, it was fabulous. It's I at mean, the Imperial it, Theater, it, which is. One it of it the was best. nominated for the previous year. Was nominated yes. for twelve Tony Awards, and it only won one, which is I mean, which is a shame. I think it got robbed because it was so. Oh, it was so dynamite. Well, Absolutely, we, we dynamite. loved it. I loved it too. I really loved it. And, and every member of that cast oh. is to blow your mind, right? Incredible, yeah. Yeah, and the dancing on top of the singing. Well, it just. Yes, I mean Sergio Trujillo is amazing, as a choreographer. Oh. He's just magical. I love that show. I love that. So should we show? Yeah. The, so we, we, have a, as well. we have a clip from this, which is just one of the hottest shows on Broadway when it comes back. <laughs> Ain't too proud. I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. If I have to beg you, please, for your sympathy, I don't mind, because you mean that much to me. <laughs> Those guys are fantastic. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I just love it. I really <laughs> do. <laughs> it's breathtaking, isn't it? Yes, I totally agree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I just sit in the theater watching them just in awe. Yeah. <laughs> no, with the, the sound on top of it, with the movement, it just blows your mind. It yeah. really does. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful show. And do you remember what date that's opening again? That's October 16th. October 16th. Uh, Ain't Too Proud will be back at what do you, which theater? The Imperial Theater. The Imperial Theater. Jamie's the producer of that show. But you, you've, you've got your finger in. I'm, I need my notes <laughs> to uh. remember everything that you're doing, Jamie. And I try not to look down. But uh, besides Tina, there's their inheritance. It was nominated for 11. We're going to talk about some of them later, but I want to just bring them up before we go to something. I just want to okay. let everyone know everything you're involved in. The Inheritance, Slave Play, Frankie and Johnny, which had two nominations And also. Slave Play had 12 nominations, including Best Play. Inheritance and Slave Play are both up for Best Play. Um, but yeah, it's and Frankie and Johnny was such a beautiful production with Audra McDonald. She's special. She, you know, she really is. And Michael Shannon is an incredible actor. He really is. Um, so yeah, and and you know, and, and and Tina being up for best musical, it's it's an exciting year. I, and the Tonys are taking place on September twenty sixth in a Broadway theater that we do not know. No, are we, are we going to be? Are we going to be able to go attend them? I hope so. <laughs> I, mean, is it gonna we be, I, I was I was concerned it might be virtual. Is why I was worried. No, about I, it's but it's taking place in a Broadway theater, so I think there's going to be an audience. But you know. There hasn't been anything about. Did you have your tickets. outfit ready for the Tony Awards? I did. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really. I, I I'm one of these. I'll wait to the last minute oh, to decide. Oh, right. But oh. but I mean, I guess I do kind of have my outfit picked out already. And um, but you know, more than my outfit, I just want it to happen. It's been it's taken so long because we closed on March 12th, 2020. That was, you know, March 11th was the last Broadway performance. That was it. 
Uh, Jamie, you know, what else I want to talk about besides all the shows? You're, you're, a, you're a talk show host. You have a television show. You have a television show here that also shows at LTV. You, you tape it in New York. And you go to different venues like Birdland and uh, around the city. And you do shows with all these stars that are just wonderful. Uh, but well, I've been doing it for like 30 years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I've been going to them for a, for a long time now, too. I've seen many of them. Yeah. Over the years, they're all wonderful. But you make often make CDs uh, off from your I have ma many, many CDs out. But, you know, during the pandemic, something just hit me that one of the songs that I, I just happened to... But what I want to show them first is the, is the CD okay. that, 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 uh, for the cover. You, you, you made us Wish on the Moon. Wish on the Moon, which, yeah, which is my only, it's my only solo CD. Okay, this is, this is Jamie's solo, one solo CD. And, and during the everything else is you know Jamie Doran friends so with, uh, with yeah with people so I only had like one song on each album. At but this when you were the only person singing. Uh huh. I mean, I might have had a duet here and there, but yeah, I was the only artist. So now tell the story during the pandemic. Well, during the pandemic, something just came to me that the song that I co-wrote with Barry Kleinbord and Shelley Markham called "Wish on the Moon," which was our title track might make an interesting animated short. So I called my friend Candy Kugel, who owns Buzzco Company, and she I've seen so many of her animated shorts that I thought, this might be fun to do. And, and we did it. So now I have my first short film, and it's, you know, it's called Wish on the Moon. And there's been interest as a children's book, but, you know, We'll see what happens. If anybody out there, there's a children's book publisher, we're very open to having this published as a children's book. We love it. Oh, it's, it's so cute. It's a wonderful idea, and I love it. I want to show, we brought the animation to show to the audience. So can, can we have it? It's Jamie DeRoy's Wish on a Moon. a child I'd spend a moment each night I'd wish on the moon with all of my might moon I know that life has its own special plan but help me to grow as soon as you can oh how I long to be as old as you and do the things that grown people do the moon never answered, so I filled the hours Riding my bike or admiring the flowers Run to the movies or talk on the phone And at night make a wish to let me be grown Wishes came and wishes went And time trundled by I sighed to the moon, but got no reply. And soon my days became a blur of so many things, from playing with dolls to swinging on swings, studying spelling or trips to the zoo, sitting and thinking of new things to do, dressing for parties or singing in choir, cold wintry evenings in front of the fire, Mittens and mufflers and men made of snow And a moon full of wishes to please help me grow And so, without knowing the moments have flown I'm now an adult with a child of my own And when I look at her smile I can see me then Now I wish on the moon To make me a child again
you know, but uh, it just calls to me in such a special way because part of my journey back to the theater was about rediscovering my child. And I learned how to do that from my dogs. And I wrote a show about it, too, called My Lessons from Dogs. Oh, so oh it's nice. like, and it was a process that just grew and grew and grew and got more and more fun. So I, I, this lends itself to so much more than just this little song. Oh, I, thanks. Yeah, yeah, uh, well, if we, we find it to be very sweet. And I thought Candy Kugel did a beautiful job oh, of the it's, animation. Oh, the animations are terrific. terrific. Can, I almost think it can make it a, a longer movie. Well, <laughs> you no. Know, you can make more. That, that, I don't think so. But <laughs> <laughs> It's the song, and that's it. <laughs> I'm always ambitious, you know, <laughs> and everyone has to rein me in. I know that's enough. <laughs> yeah. So it's beautiful. It's it's, it's so lovely. I, I wish you so much um, um, more to do with it. But you've got uh, other things. We have more shows that are returning. I wanted to talk about too, because To Kill a Mockingbird is also uh, coming back, which uh, and with Jeff Daniels, Jeff Daniels and Celia do- Keenan Bolger. So. I mean, the, you know, two original stars when it opened on Broadway, and Jeff Daniels is, he is so special as Atticus Finch. It's, it's, it's just so moving, and, and, and what a great, what a great, great piece of theater. Well, it was a great novel, too. Yeah. I mean, it was, like, it was really very special. And it was a special movie you know, on top of it. I, I know, mean, Gregory like it was Peck like, doing that film. Oof. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, um, an archetype. I, I guess that's what you call it, right? Is yeah. that what you call it? I an guess. Archetype? <laughs> <laughs> and then we had the, the, the Lehman tr- Trilogy is coming the back? The Lehman Trilogy was in previews. Is it coming back? Oh, totally coming back. And it's at the Nederlander Theater. And uh, no, I saw that too. You know, I saw all these shows, by the way. You know that. <laughs> I know. And the, the, uh, the only difference is that Adrian Lester is now in, in, in one of the roles, so Simon Russell Beale and um, oh, I'm going to blank on the, the, <laughs> well, you've, you've the there's a, there are three, three gra- the, you know, the two, I can't so help two you, of I'm the sorry, originals but, you know. are, are coming back and Adrian Lester, um, who has uh, replaced Ben Miles because Ben had previous engagement. I mean, this it's was hard supposed, to keep everybody together. well, you know, this was a limited run. Right. And I'm surprised so it's coming it was, back. Uh, we were thrilled yeah. that it was coming back. And, and you know, with, with, with right. two of the three originals. So it, I mean, to make know, that all that happen after a time period like this, those things are really tricky. And it's one of the most incredible plays you'll ever see. These three actors play like 150-some parts. They're just changing <laughs> constantly without changing any costumes, any... There's no wigs. There's no everything is you know in their in their costume. It's incredible, and the set, oh, it's just it's it's fabulous. I beg everyone to see it because it's it's the story of the Lehman Brothers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and their their the history. It's quite exceptional. Well, you you always choose really interesting projects too. And oh, the company is the company is coming back, and we oh, with Katrina Link and Patty Lapone. Oh yeah. I mean. And we're very, very, very excited about that. And uh, that, that's that been moved up now. It's going to open November 15th. Is, you know, we were in previews there, too. Mm-hmm. And so... That I didn't, I didn't know that was in previews. I, oh, just, yeah. t- I just learned that today, actually. Yeah. Because no, I, I, have, I haven't seen it. I didn't know anything about it. Well, we were... You, have you seen it already, then? Oh, I thought it's terrific. I mean, luckily... Like, I don't know, it was the first or second preview, they did a, uh, maybe it was the first preview, they did a little party that might have been our opening night. And the, the shame of it was it was supposed to open on March 22nd, 2020. A lot of tutus in there. <laughs> and that was Stephen Sondheim's 90th birthday. And then the pandemic started and everything closed on the 12th. So he didn't get to have his big 90th birthday celebration like that, they you think did it has something, something to do with virtual. the twos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope not. I like twenty twos, but me too um, is one of my favorite. So now moments. it's now it's coming back, and it's it'll be opening in December, and we're we're thrilled about it. It's a beautiful, fabulous production, and, and it's I, I just feel like Patty Lapone was destined to sing that song on Broadway in that in a revival of Company, don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's got her name written all over it in a way. Uh, I mean not that. Uh, 
what's her name? We were just talking about her. Uh, Elaine Stritch. Elaine Stritch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, wasn't wonderful. But, but also this production, Bobby is played by a female because it's always been traditionally a man. Oh, I, I didn't know that either. Oh. No. Cause I told you I didn't know anything about it. Production. <laughs> it a lot of, so Katrina Link is, Katrina Link is going to be Bobby? Uh-huh. Oh, how cool. Great. Oh, but she's, oh, I, I, I adore her. She just, what is she just, she's a special and, presence and, on the stage. You know, Hangman had, had closed. Now we hear that it's going to come back, but we don't know when. Maybe, what is you know, 2022. 20, 20, I don't know about Hangman. It's a Martin McDonough play. Oh. Terrific. It started at the Atlantic Theater. Just fabulous. We were in previews with Hangman, too, and wh at the Golden Theater. Wh what's it about? Oh, I don't even want to tell you. It's 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 a, that it's, good. Yeah, no, it's great. It's just it's a it's a little bit of a mystery. So I don't want to. His stuff is always wonderful, though. Uh, oh, he's great. He's fabulous. He's a <laughs> always a little, you know, black comedy. Yes, I <laughs> love his dark comedy. It's it just it's it's. it's uh, you've seen it already too. Oh yeah, well I saw it at the Atlantic and I saw it in previews. Oh, uh, you yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, you said I, I, you said you saw it. I didn't see it at the Atlantic, so I didn't know, and I didn't I didn't know about it, it at all. It was great. No, but, yeah. um, and, and th that's hum coming in the fall too. Yes. No, I didn't know that's not coming in the fall. I said that's probably 2022. We don't know. Oh. We just we just got word that it's you know going to reopen because it had that had literally packed up and and, and gone. They were at the Golden Theater, and now at the Golden Theater. Uh, Thoughts of a Colored Man will be opening at the Golden Theater on October And that's 31st. another new play. That's a brand new play. And it, it's very, very exciting. And so, you know, there's, there's just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot going on on Broadway. And, and everybody needs to get vaccinated and come back to the theater. And it's going to, you know, we'll, we'll be back in business and, and, and back to our lives and our... You know, there's something that you miss so much about not being able to experience the theater and live music and all, all this stuff that we're used to being able to do. Even going to a real movie in a movie theater, it's so different. Than yeah, but it's also the communal effect of being, yeah. I mean, there's a sense of family about when you're experiencing theater or experiencing any kind of live production with other people and there's a shared experience and there's, a, you know, there's all that that we didn't get to have all because of... Part, totally. I mean, I, you know, all these things that are streaming on television, they've been great for the pandemic, and of course they'll continue to be great at home. But that I'm not home crazy experience on does not <laughs> I don't replace like <laughs> going to either a movie or going to the theater. It's, not, it's just not the same. I multitask when I'm... Do, do you watch the streaming stuff? I. Well, I mean, like when they stream theater, do you like to watch that? I mean, during the pandemic, I, I, I did I some of it, I but mean no, like, I don't love you know, it. I mean, like I don't mean like when you know Bonnie and Stu go in and do their their thing. That's that's that, that's that's that's, that's, that's really fabulous. What well, they like do. you know, they at Lincoln Center did a great job of Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike, and they did stream that. I thought that was one of the better productions that and I. How had, many cameras did they use? I don't know, but it was because very makes, well done. That they must have had a lot of cameras. But, you know, and, I, and it was a play that I knew quite well and loved very much. But for the most part, I, I'm not that interested in watching streaming. I, you know, it's, it doesn't move me like theater moves me. No, I mean, when you're sitting at the inheritance and at the end of part one and all these men start walking down the aisle and you don't expect them, and, and it's just like, oh, my God, it's like everybody that ever died of AIDS that I knew in my life, and I just started bawling. I, I was with a friend. I took Kleenex out, and I handed it to her because I knew she was going to start to cry any second, too. It was so moving. You can't repeat that. You can't, you know, on duplicate that on a, on, a, on a screen. I feel exactly the same way. It's, it's impossible to... Uh get to the same place <coughs> on a screen when, when you ha what, what happens when you're in front of a live theater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I just want to give a shout out to something that you do, too, because that, um, at your uh, shows that you've been doing for over 30 years now, you uh, benefit the Actors Fund, which is uh, a great organization. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about well, the Actors they, Fund? You know, they not only help actors, but everybody 
on both sides of the lights. And during the pandemic, they were more helpful than ever. I mean, they really stepped up to the plate and helped so many, so many people. And like I said, not just actors. So Joe, Joe Benincasa runs it, and he is the most dynamic CEO I've ever known in my life and the most, the biggest heart. I mean, he is just such a, such a mensch. I don't know how else to put it. And Brian Stokes Mitchell, you know, is, the, is perfect. He's yeah. the he's the figurehead, and 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 there's nothing better, no one better than than Brian Stokes Mitchell. And during the pandemic, he would stick his head out the window and sing the Impossible Dream every night. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> you didn't read <laughs> no, about no, that? No, oh no. my God! You know when people were, <laughs> we're doing the seven <laughs> o'clock and cheering on the I the, heard the about that, but I didn't know about workers. Brian. No. On the Upper West Side, he would sing out the window and he has such a powerful oh, voice. Oh, I know his voice is outrageous. Oh, magnificent. <laughs> yes. It's just magnificent. We, we've seen him so many times. Oh my God, he's a force of nature too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. And, and, and also on, on PBS, on uh, the New York premiere on, on April, not April, I can't believe it said, and this is my pandemic <laughs> mind. So it happens to me too. August 19th. It happens to me too. Uh, Rick McKay's um, Broadway Beyond the Golden Age is going to be shown, so we're very happy about that too. And it's just, it's been a very busy, 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 busy time, um, considering how much time we spent at home. You mean the coming out is getting, uh, I mean, it's yeah, like all the, I mean, you know, one of the things I learned though from the being in the pandemic, I don't want to be as busy as I was before. As much as I like being busy, I don't want to have to feel like I'm rushing to be to the next place. That I'm all, I don't want to feel like I'm always late. Well, I, I agree with you there. And, and I, I, I'm happy the, to slow down a little bit. Because during the pandemic, I learned how to not to be, you know, feel like I'm going to be late all the time. Really? Well, yeah. Yeah, because we didn't have I, any schedule at anything. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what day it was ever. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't tell the difference between a Tuesday and a Friday. I, well, I, I, had, I was able to do that because I worked out on certain days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but Jamie, it, it's been so much fun having you come to, to, to visit us here at LTV. And I, I love seeing you entertain. I love all the shows that you're involved in. And I'm wishing you the best of luck at the Tony Awards. What, September 20th, is it? 26th, is it? It is September 26th. September yeah, 26th. Sunday night. And hopefully we can actually attend. Yes. Hopefully I think we'll... that's the idea. <laughs> You'll have to come back, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I win a Tony, I'll come back. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you.